Okay, so I'm working on this sword. I'm doing it in a separate ink layer because I use shift to draw the straight lines so that I can then erase them from the skull. And then I'm working on the tip, which I hand drew. And now I'm just using my lasso to refine some of these shapes. Because I still want it to look hand inked, not like it's a computer cutout. But just showing you the benefits. This is um, actually something you can do with traditional materials. And this is something I learned in art school. I'm old enough that when I did a type design class, it wasn't digital. We actually had to paint all of our type design. And then it got photostatted into a clean graphic for, for printing. And what you use is on something called illustration board. You use what are called graphic flat paints. So Pelican made them. There was like graphic black and then graphic white. And you would paint with really expensive sable brushes, this really thick paint that was supposed to be 100% opaque. And you would paint your, um, your black letter forms. I remember I did the word Paris in a, a, type, a type design that I came up with. And then, because you're trying to get it just as perfectly clean and smooth as possible before vectors, you would then take your white paint and do what I'm doing with my lasso here and kind of trim the edges and smooth everything out. Right? Yeah, so I like that sword point. It has the right amount of funkiness. But compared to everything else, it feels a little light, a little lightweight. So what if I wanted to thicken that sword? What options do I have? Well, I have it on its own layer. So an easy option is to just double click on the layer, go to layer styles, and put an outside stroke on it. So you can see it in red right now. But if I change that red to black, the most solid black, I can try out different thicknesses. So adding one pixel on the outside of each line, that makes a nice difference. And I think I like that. I think that balances with my other line art. So now here's, here's something new we're gonna be learning. How do I make that so it's not an effect anymore? so that I can merge it with my other layer. Because for coloring, I want all my black lines on one layer. Well, what I'm gonna do is actually right click on the layer and I can say rasterize layer style. So just like rasterizing a smart object, that will solidify the effect just into pixels. All right, next. I want to delete the sword from the skull, right? And this is what's nice about clean line art is I can use my lasso and just trace. Actually, nope. just trace right inside the line art. This will be helpful in the coloring too. So I don't need to perfectly select where to erase. I just have to get it behind. The lines I've already drawn. And then I want to delete it from this layer. 
So I move that selection and then I just hit delete. And then deselect. Oh, and then I missed it down here. So don't be too quick to merge them. Good. Okay. Now, before I merge them, what else can I do? Well, maybe I can use something I've already done, right? Compositing. I can take this chunk, duplicate it, so you can see it's just on its own there. Control T in Photo P. Rotate it. So just like you can build with vector shape tools, you can build with your own ink work as well. And I can stretch it, and I can tilt it, and maybe this will save me a little bit of time drawing that hilt. And because it's on a different layer, it's easy to delete away. And then if I want to thicken this, I'm going to show you a different method. So I need to thicken those lines a little bit. Get them up to this weight. So here's the other method. Instead of just using the stroke, which works, Gives you a lot of opportunity. Just to show you a different way, I can also make a duplicate of it, Command J, and then go to Filter Gaussian Blur. And this is a filter that's very helpful. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see. So you see how it's blurring out the edges. This will also smooth out any kind of ragged line art that you have. So I'm going to just blur it a little bit. If I isolate that layer, it just looks like this. So you see those blurred edges? So it blurred out about a pixel and a half on each side, comparing it to what was there before. That was there before. Now it's a little bit softer and blurred. But I don't want to have blurry line art. So what do I do? I duplicate it on top of itself multiple times, like at least 10 times, using Command-J. And then I select them all, and then I go to Layer Merge. So that's another useful way to flatten it out. And that's about the line weight that I want. So you can draw, like I'm doing now, your different components in different layers, if that's helpful, depending on the complexity of what you're drawing. But we're going to merge them all together into one line art layer at the end. Just like if you were making it as a vector, you would have all those different vector paths, but when you brought it into your raster program, like PhotoP or Photoshop, you would want them all combined into one clear vector image. Okay, here I'm going to hold down Shift, and that will help it go perfectly horizontal. I just need to taper it down. Come on. I think you'll notice that I don't like to change my 
my brush size all that much. I find that annoying. But of course, I can customize my line art also by customizing my brush and the tip of my brush. Then I'm just going to trim the inside just slightly. Trim the outside. Okay. Now the handle, and I'm almost there. This is a wrapped handle. It's thicker in its line weight on one side in my sketch than on the other. So I can be, a, like the teeth, I can be a little bit more freehand with it. It doesn't need to be like the blade of the sword where everything's perfectly straight. And at the same time, I don't want to just take one of these shapes like it was a vector shape tool. I could do this, but let me show you the disadvantages. If I duplicate and kind of just copy and paste them, it's going to start to look copy pasty, you know, like if you were to copy and paste your own or the, the same foot onto all four feet of your fantasy creature without modifying it a little bit. But what I can do is copy paste it. And then just like we did with compositing our creature, I can use control T and I can adjust it a little bit, warp it push and pull it. So there's lots of ways to get your line art. Whatever works for what the design you want. And so if you don't get the line you want the first time, like this got a little wide maybe on both sides, then remember that you can control T it, which is free transforming, and you can tighten it up. All right, now the pommel. I'm going to try to have contained shapes. Contained shapes matter. They make coloring a lot easier. Remember, I left that part of the skull intentionally um, open so I can show you the problems of having uncontained shapes. And sometimes you need them in your design, but they're just a little bit trickier to work with when it comes to the coloring. Well, I'm not super happy with that curve. Let's try it again. So just like if I were using a regular ink pen, Remember that you can always work on the inside edge or the outside edge with your inking. So if I want to thicken it up on one side and I don't change to a, a larger pen, I just have to redraw on the outside and bring that edge out. Now, sometimes um, the angle is really hard for inking. Like it's hard to do downstroke, especially with a trackpad. So if you go to the hand tool at the bottom, the hand tool just moves it around while you're zoomed in. But then if you go to the, the second one in the drawer, the rotate tool, this actually allows you 
to tilt the image. 